Ferris box truck. In today's video, I want to do a quick run through with you guys of how I slept and lived in the Sprinter van when I expedited over the road. So yeah, I've been meaning to do this video for some time, but actually as of tomorrow, I'm going to be selling this van. I told you guys in my last video that I had a guy fly in from Raleigh, North Carolina, and pretty much, yeah, he looked the van over. He liked what he saw. There is no issues with it. It's actually running now, but yeah, there is no issues with it. And initially I was going to drive the van up to Riley to have it inspected, but we were in the van for over four hours, kind of crunching the numbers and stuff of that nature. So he decided that he would just fly back in, drive the van back himself, have it inspected. Upon inspection, he'll send me a confirmation text and that will solidify the deal. So I'm not having to go up to Riley, which kind of, you know, takes a, a load off of me trying to you know, keep the box truck moving and going also. And yeah, I went through a list of potential candidates for, you know, um, drivers. And I have two uh, coming to do test drives this particular Sunday, today being Thursday. So Sunday afternoon, I have two drivers coming in to complete test drives. And I'm hoping to bring them both on to at least cover four days out of the week to get me out of the truck three to four days. I can manage four strong days myself, but I have to get some rest. I've been pushing it lately. I'm pushing six to seven days a week running. So I got to get out of the truck to take care of some of the things, you know, pertaining to the business at home. So that's kind of what I'm working on and why I'm bringing on two drivers. So yeah, there'll be operating three to four days out of the week, me operating the other three. And in the height of peak season, the truck will probably be running uh, 24 hours a day with one driver running an eight hour shift and then another driver running at that eight hour shift or myself stepping in and running the eight hour shift. But yeah, we're gonna try to keep the truck running almost 24 hours a day during peak season, close to it, you know, and within compliance, not just running it crazy, but within compliance. So yeah, I got the guy coming to pick the van up tomorrow and yep, he's gonna get it inspected and that should pretty much complete the deal. I'll then mail the title and everything will be done. So that's why I want to go ahead and knock this video out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Always, you know, in a sprinter van over the road, you want to have a couple coolers, you know, the bottom one being bigger than the top one. But yeah, I definitely keep water, you know, Snapple or whatever your choice of drink is, ice, you know, and you probably need to fill it up once a day, you know, in the wintertime, a lot less, not even need ice, you know, during the winter. But you definitely want to have you either a large cooler or a couple coolers, you know, and always keep like snacks, you know, drinks, stuff of that nature. You never know when you're going to get into the mountains or somewhere where you don't have a service station, a Walmart or something that you can get to in a reasonable amount of time within your trip. So I will always definitely like go to Walmart and stock up on just snacks, drinks, whatever you like to consume over the road. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run also. But yeah, definitely always having, you know, a couple coolers, you know, and I kind of secure them with the cord. And if you let the seat back far enough, yeah. So that's that. Second, you know, I use these window shades. The trucker uh, deals that they sell at Walmart are too square. So they don't work with this particular window style, but these work great. You clean the window, you clean the back of the shade and it just sticks on and if you don't mess with it you know it won't come down but you do have to take it off to actually roll the window down but those are great with helping keep the vehicle cool and kind of just keeping the light out you know you always like right now you want out you want to be in a shaded area you know you don't want to park in the direct sunlight for the sake of keeping cool so 
the shades are a great addition. I also have window shades. A lot of, you know, the materials that I keep in this van aren't in here because some of it I've already moved over to the box truck. And actually right after this video, I'm gonna be cleaning everything out except what he's actually taken back with him to Riley. So, yeah, but the window shades, coolers, you know, and then here, I always keep a jacket, that being like a North Face, just for rainy, cold weather. You never know what you'll actually get into, you know, but you wanna keep some type of jacket, raincoat, poncho, something of that nature. And I have ponchos and stuff in the back, but this is just my regular throw on, really quick jacket that I have when I'm, you know, expediting. So yeah, that's, you know, something that you must have and, Beyond that, you know, back on this side is like a hand sanitizer and I think that's some floss sticks game for if I do laundry, stuff like that. Yeah, and pretty much also, this door opens up. I'll open it when we get in the back, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you definitely want to get in like a shaded area and I'll let you guys get a a look at the van itself. Yeah. That's it. And I've taken the company signs off from when I was leased on with the carrier that I was with. Yeah, I ended ties with them about a week ago, honestly. And what they told me was they would love to have me back, but because I wasn't communicating, they stopped uh, my contract to save me money as far as my fees. So I got about $400 back out of, I believe it was like 1500 but they did cover my auto insurance for at least uh, three months after. I stopped running for them. So I did kind of owe that to them. But yeah, this is the van front to back. Yeah. And it's the 170 wheelbase. The most popular one that you guys see uh, out on the road is one that's actually longer than this. It's the 170 wheelbase extended. You know, and I touched on this in one of my previous videos. Do not get a dually style cargo van, whether it be a uh, Ford or a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, Freightliner Sprinter, Dodge Sprinter. Do not get a dually style van as a skid will not fit between these wheel wells okay as you can see on this particular van and i'm gonna get to the setup but as you can see you can get a standard skid between those two wheel wells okay on a dual wheel van those are going to be you know wider the wheel wells which will prevent you from getting a actual standard skid between the wheel well so you'll eat the, either have to load through this door which that's all you get so you can get a skid in there it's just gonna be super dangerous and you're gonna be running the risk of clipping that door right there you know you better have a hell of five fork truck driver to get the skid in there without clipping the door you can do it but it's a good chance he's gonna come close to clipping the door so that's the problem you're going to run into if you purchase a dual rear wheel van or a dually style cargo van, which was exactly what the guy that's going to be picking this van up tomorrow was going to be uh, purchasing. It. And he was actually going to be uh, paying more than double what he's giving me for this van. So he just got lucky that he actually, you know, talk to me in time and i let them know because yeah that was going to be a huge mistake 
unless you're carrying pipes or you know construction materials that don't actually come on standard skills you never skids sorry you never want a dually style van okay if you're expediting that's not what you want okay but let's yeah go ahead uh i always try to keep you know closed toe shoes for when you're you know expediting i told you guys before i i, I wear flip-flops when i'm driving but when i'm actually in a shipper's facility i throw my gym shoes on so i usually keep a pair of gym shoes or steel toes uh as you can see i got a couple dumbbells it's a 25 and a 10 and you know you can walk around in here and actually work out you know i got my cleaning products you know just for when i'm out a tarp i've had to use this on numerous occasions a couple cups of propane for the little buddy heater and this is like a wind stopper because it's a little gap here between the door and this actual base and that's actually good for when you're using the little buddy heater which i'll show you in a second you pretty much want some type of ventilation in here as well as cracking a window but you need some type of ventilation so i have a big crack there where if i want to close it i just use this little wind stopper so yeah and then you keep like water i don't actually drink this water i mean you can honestly wash up with it you know it's a many times that i needed to rinse something off like a fork or a spoon because this is spring water but i do use it to like clean utensils anything you wanted to you know use other than drink you know and i kept you know drinking water of course in the cooler up front so yeah that's just kind of my cleaning products tarp and stuff like that you know then i did keep a mat here so when you're coming from the shippers facilities or on a lots you get oil and stuff on your shoes you can wipe your feet off because you don't want to track that stuff into the actual van okay but this is my setup and like i said that's the little buddy heater it's the smallest one and yeah usually i would sit that somewhere like here on the floor uh at times i put it back there but more of the time i would sit it like right in this area you know kind of turn towards me you don't want it too close to you and it uses propane so you want some type of ventilation also if you're going to use one of those get you a carbon monoxide detector this saved me one time i believe i was somewhere up in the mountains i can't remember if it was virginia or somewhere but i was asleep using this heater and that thing started screaming at me and i mean it didn't stop till I opened almost every door in the van. So I know it was a major carbon monoxide issue, you know, and it wasn't a low battery. So yeah, that thing actually saved me. So I would recommend this in any, you know, cargo van, get you a carbon monoxide detector, change the battery when it gets low, you know, cause yeah, it'll definitely save your life. I also, I'm keeping this, you know, but yeah, I have my, it's like a Sterilite dress I got from Walmart. And yeah, I keep the bands around it so it doesn't uh, go sliding when I'm driving. But yeah, it just clothing, hats. And this was way more full when I actually was using the van. But now, you know, I don't. Soap, plates, kitchen items, shower, uh, hair stuff bags hand sanitizer and then like i say spoons and it was way more full when i was actually expediting and this is like a warm clothes i got thermals and hats and extra pajamas still in here i'm gonna take all of this out uh towels and extra sheets and stuff and then at the bottom snacks that i used to see and i haven't been in here but this is like little stuff you kind of want to keep you know with you on the road you know just to have something, just in case you get in the jam. Then uh, this is like a four in one power pack, the inverter. And I also have a actual inverter, which you can use this to plug items into. Let me get 
this off of here. Okay, so yeah, you can use that to plug items into and you will connect this inverter to that battery I got down there and household items you could then plug into here. I got this portable TV, but it actually only plugs up to be charged. It works, you know, from a charge. So, yeah, I keep that, you know, and you can hook this to a DVD player or a video game, kind of go from there. You know, I have a stool back here. You guys can see, and it flips out. And everything I put in here was made to be able to be taken out you know, at the, look, when I'm ready to sell the van, I knew I wouldn't have the van forever. I knew it would come a point in period where I would want to sell it. So therefore, yeah, I didn't go with the extravagant, you know, people got bathrooms. You could hang all type of stuff from the walls. Like I kept it bare to where the second I was ready to sell it, all of this comes right out. Okay. Everything comes right out of here. I didn't make it all extravagant, you know, even this, you know, everything in here takes seconds to remove, you know, and then, you know, you got like a fan and I have different types of fans now, uh, light switches that need some batteries, but those are really good. You can order them or get them at like Ross, Target, you know, places like that. But yeah, you're going to need lighting back here. So that's a good thing kind of got my little mirror that i had hanging here and you could take it down and if you want to sit over here do whatever but then i had also tools and a jack down there and then in here just like extra bungee cords straps emergency kits ponchos a four-way whatever you could think of that you might need in a jam on the road electrical blankets stuff like well not electrical blankets but uh, emergency blankets stuff like that all of that's in there and yeah that's just the main you know setup everything I, like even the hooks you know that stuff comes right off you know and i'm gonna leave him in here because he said he was cool with keeping it and then yeah i always wanted the pass through door you know i didn't want to have where well, i'm trapped and have to exit out of this door so yeah that pass through door works wonders I didn't want one without it. Okay, so yeah, that's that deal. And yeah, that's pretty much, you know, my setup in, you know, the Sprinter van. And like I said, in here, this is just like bowls, you know, cups, uh, hefty, strong bags. I got a workout mat right here. You know, I got a, a, a lawn chair where from somewhere and I need to get out or I want to sit in here, I can pull that out of there. So. Yeah, that's pretty much the setup, you know, and then these back doors, they open up. Yeah. And yeah, that's the deal. So, yeah, and if you come over, cool thing about with these vans, you can pop that. It flips all the way around. Yeah. And they both do the same deal. You just kind of detach them there. And yeah. They flip all the way around. So you can kind of bag up to like a hill or grassy area. Open this up if you're in a decent area. Kind of let it air out. The wind get through here. And that bag hanging on that, uh, door up front that's actually an extra blanket yeah and then these things here is what you if you want to use serious straps you hook your straps into those they got them all the way along the floor line and if not you could use bungee cords in the e-tracks you know those are the e-tracks so yeah that's the setup and yeah i've been wanting to get this info out to you guys so yeah I pretty much said today would be the day because like I say, he's gonna be here. I believe it's 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. I'm gonna be picking up.
picking them up from the airport. I'll probably run a video for you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna be picking them up from the airport. He gonna be flying in with his buddy and then uh, they're gonna actually drive the van back to Riley and get it inspected. Send me the confirmation text. We already wrote up a whole contract. We gonna notarize it before he leaves, but yeah, that's what's happening, man. And he getting a hell of a deal on the van. I'm gonna honestly miss it. So I got some memories in this uh, van, but it's time for me to move on into, you know, the next phase of my truck and company. So this is kind of just the setup. And when I expedite it, these will fit four skis if you turn them sideways. Okay, on a normal run, you're normally gonna get, I don't know, one or two skids. Most of the time it's one. Oftentimes it'll be two. They like to use the sprinters because it's tall. I'm 6'2", and pretty much I have about an inch overhead space where I would never hit my head on the sill. Okay, so that's kind of the setup, and that's why they love these vans. You can get four skids in here, and like, this is how I would sleep. But if I had a load, literally this dresser can go on my front seat. I've had to do it once. This tool set, the jack and the bin can sit on top of most loads without damaging anything. And the bed folds up into nothing right up under this heater. When I fold it up, this is the band that holds it. It comes to about right there. And it sits out maybe, I say, 10 inches from the wall. So it's well behind this wheel wheel, you know, which is the space you want. So a skid will slide right past the bed. And if I only have two skids, this bed will actually slide, you know, up a nice amount of the way. So pretty much, you know, let me just let you guys kind of see if I had to actually, and it kind of feel now, but you guys could see, you can comfortably get two skids in here, at least one, and then turn around and, you know, still have room to sleep. And I've had to honestly put the, the uh, bed on top of a load, you know, not damaging it. Don't ever put a bed on a load where it would damage it, but Sometimes I've had to, you know, do certain things to, you know, get some sleep while I was still loaded because the pickup time or the drop time rather was later than when I actually arrived. So sometimes you're going to have to wing it. But that's pretty much my setup in a Sprinter van. You know, when I was expediting, these are the items that I normally kept with me. Like I said, it's a few things missing. A lot of the lighting is going out of the van and that's just simply because you know i've already been moving things from here into the box truck but yeah this is my setup in a sprinter van and i wanted to get this out to you guys before i actually got rid of it that way you could kind of get just a general idea of how to you know live in one otr over the road so that's that man you guys stay safe out there take it easy and have a good one appreciate you